Cinza Yesu, Cinza Yesu, Yali Namani, Agayamba, Agakoi, Cinza Yesu. Sinza Yesu, Sinza Yesu, Sinza Yesu, Yali Namani, Agayamba, Abakoi, Sinza Yesu. Sinza Yesu, Sinza Yesu, Sinza Yesu, Yali Namani, Agayamba, Abakoi, Sinza Yesu. Sinza Yesu, Sinza Yesu, Sinza Yesu, Yali Namani, Agayamba, Abakoi, Sinza Yesu. Yesu Fuka Fuka Yesu Fuka Kaba Kawa Sayuni Polo Goma Yayuda Fuka Yesu Fuka Fuga, 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 Yesu, fuga, fuga, Yesu, fuga, kaba kawasa yuni, polo goma ya yuda, fuga. Yesu fuga O kwa gala ko kumpi tidi deko ngakulunji ngakunji nyo O kwa kuleta kunsi kuno O kutufira Umsai kwa iwa Egolo kosa O kukwe kukuma Ulicho O kukwe kukuma Sana wachecho Echande tawoli Nechinte kawo Okusechi munawe Chisana wachecho Echande tawoli Father, we thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for you fight our battles, O oh God. 
what we take for granted showing up every single day alone is by your grace, by your power. Oh, how we've been fought. How we've lost our way. How we've searched for your God. Father, we surrender our vessels for your using, for your ministration to marriages in the land of God. We pray and believe, O Lord, that your purpose for marriage will be realized, O God. Father, we pray for couples whose foundations were out of order, O Lord. Father, you the Lord who restores the, the years of the locust earth, may you restore the improper foundations of God. In the name of Jesus. That all marriages may find joy. That all marriages may find peace. That all marriages may find their purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus, believed and prayed. Amen. <sighs> Tuli mukubera woko omulangiro mulunji tuli mukubera woko mwagara tuli mukubera woko gwawumuza bakoye tuli mukubera woko Mwagara O sinzi wenga Yesu O sinzi wenga Yesu O sani de O kusinzi wa O sinzi wenga, o sinzi wenga, o sinzi wenga, Yesu. Mshala chitaka. Wanji mwami chitaka. Kulike kubo. Teri wa diri yaungu. It hasn't been in. Teri wa diri yaungu. Ah, it's been hard. It's been tough. Give God the glory. May he take all the praise. Afuga. <laughs> yeah, afuga, yes. To be mulekele. Avifuge. Afuga. Yeah, afuga, yes. To be mulekele. Avifuge. I woke up uh, this morning. Oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, yesterday, the, the <laughs> day of our shooting, we weren't able to shoot because of uh, <coughs> the rain that flooded our set. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I woke up to the sound of rain. I woke up next to my wife with whom we hadn't gone to bed in agreement. And uh, I wondered in my spirit, am I willing to do another podcast when I can't witness for oneness? Will my witness be true or will it be false? The week has been a long one. I've never felt such weight. I've never weight felt such a burden in a long time. I struggle to hear. And how the Lord turned things around this morning. And Ha komyawo 
Ememe yange Netagachi Yesu ngawoli Chechirinzi jaku Yesu Kuvanga kolatia Yanu ngamia Hira yandi sanzea Komia wememe yange Neta gachi Yesu ngawoli Chechirinzi jaku Yesu Nothing could ever separate us from his love. How are you? I'm in a good place now. I'm now. In a, <laughs> the definitive word being now. I'm in a better place now. It's been, it's been hard. I choose today. Nechifu kubude Asangula maziga Nagafule sanyu Tula tuwa ye Kubamu kama vyako zevye umisa Tula tuwa ye Tuwa ye Indeed What the enemy means for evil He turns it around He turns it around He turns it around Turns it around. Mm -hmm. Oh, evil. You know the presence of God. God is the presence of God has a distinct mark. Mm -hmm. His presence. If you met a a person of power and they came to your home, you cannot not feel their presence. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords cannot be in your midst and you don't feel his presence. He lifts Everything that weighs heavy. He restores your joy. He restores your peace. I can bear witness. Or have missed his presence. His presence. How I've missed. I was telling a friend, I, I, can't, I couldn't find the serenity that I'm accustomed to walking, the things we take for granted, that you can walk and things minister to you. You can see the birds and they minister to you because you're at peace. You are at rest. Where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> the beginning is a good place to start. <laughs> um, it's been a while since we since we had the experience we had. Yes. The last few days, but mostly actually yesterday. What happened yesterday? <laughs> I don't know what happened <laughs> yesterday. I can't explain what happened yesterday. Yesterday, I just I can't explain what happened yesterday. I had I think there's a part of me that had forgotten. Yeah. What yesterday felt like. Part of you had forgotten. Because it's been a while. Ah. It's been a while since we had one of those um needless unnecessary yeah yeah silly incidents yeah. immature immature incidents but that have far reaching consequences yes 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 the little fox is allowing the little foxes to find room yeah but even thinking about it right now is is making my eyes tear but uh, 
Yeah, we hadn't had a conversation around clothing in a very long time. Yeah, yeah. We hadn't had a conversation around clothing yeah. in a long time. But it, it doesn't surprise me that it happened yesterday. Yeah. The reason why it doesn't surprise me that it happened yesterday is because we've we've been we've been waging war since Tuesday. Yeah. 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 From the frustrated podcast. Yeah. The attempt to shoot in another location. Yeah. yeah. Which would have been a perfect location. Yeah. And the handiwork that the neighbors decide to start doing and all the banging and the gonging yeah, yeah. that frustrated that. Yeah. So we literally spent the whole, we actually spent pretty much a good chunk of Tuesday yeah. trying to shoot. Yeah. And it just yeah. got frustrated. Yeah. Really, really got frustrated. And then we purpose that we shall shoot yeah. on Thursday. Because we have committed ourselves yeah. to shooting every week. Yes. yes. And I suppose the enemy said, okay, Tuesday is frustrated. Let's 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 see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't remember much of Wednesday. Wednesday's when I realized I've been under attack. Mm, yes. I uh, Yes. You yeah. felt a certain way. Yes. Yeah, and then then come yesterday when I decide to Still Wednesday, just the evening. Oh, yesterday was Wednesday. <laughs> Wait, and it's in the morning that we had the conversation yes. about Being how under you were, and how you felt you were under attack, yes. and then you sort of conquered that one. Yes. <laughs> when you went evening. for your walk, evening. and then in the evening, something uh, got me in my own house. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the evening, you decide to. I mean, I decide in my infinite wisdom that today I want to wear. Leggings. <laughs> 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 I decide I want to wear leggings, and for some crazy reason, I decide I want to walk out of the house in leggings. Yes, you know, yes. to come and check on our studio yes. space if everything is okay yes. prior to the shoot. And then you make a comment and you ask, "Are you going out like that?" Yes. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, "But what's wrong with my leggings?" Yes. And that's really sad because the conversation we had in the first year of our marriage, yeah. and yeah. we sort of sorted things yeah. out. You know, I had yeah. made peace with with it mm. and i think what's really sad is i didn't recognize the repeat yeah. that this this was a familiar it was a familiar conversation yeah. that always ended a certain way yeah. but i think because i had had actually let me take a step back right after tuesday yeah. when yes it was wednesday yes tuesday afternoon and the whole of wednesday i didn't have time yeah. to spend I didn't no I didn't have time I didn't spend time yeah. in the presence of God mm. I had a lot on my mind mm. that I was juggling mm. I had a lot on my mind that I was juggling and there's some communication that came through yesterday that just threw me off yeah. a bit so I I was not present yeah. so now that doesn't surprise me that when you make a comment about a well-intentioned comment yeah. about the way I was dressing, the way I was dressed while coming to, to check up on our space, that I would respond the way I used to respond one year. Yeah. And I, not, I didn't even notice <laughs> that I had actually responded the way I used to respond one yeah. year ago, which we had really overcome. Yeah. So I decided, okay, let me go change. So I go change, put on a skirt, come, make sure everything is okay for our set, and then come back home. And I think I... Threw back the leggings. Yeah. <laughs> I changed into the leggings yeah. again. And I know I gave you some flimsy reason for that, yeah. really. Some random reason. Um, but I think it's I think what what was very uncomfortable about yesterday, not even uncomfortable, what was wrong about yesterday is the way I responded. Mm. Mm. My response was not commensurate. Mm. It was it was full force. <laughs> for lack of, it wasn't commensurate. Yeah. to the way you had spoken. Mm. Mm. You came from a good place yeah. and um, well-intentioned. Mm. This was something we had dealt with yeah. eternity ago. But my response was, yeah. it was, I think like like I said, 
when I finally managed to come yeah. and say, you know, and, and make peace. Yeah. It wasn't the kind of response that you give yeah. to someone who's who you recognize yeah. has place of leadership over you. Yeah. It's not the kind of response that you give to someone who you say you honor. Mm -hmm. It's not the kind of response you give to someone that you love. Mm -hmm. It's not the kind of response you give to someone that you respect. Mm -hmm. Everything about my response was wrong. Mm -hmm. But also because it came from a place of me mm -hmm. or I, mm -hmm. not we. Because yeah, yeah. I remember the response I gave was... <laughs> Should I repeat it? You think. <laughs> <laughs> the response I gave to your comment in relation to how I was dressed, I said, I actually said, which translates into you guys are not going to take away my peace. In, in my house. In my, yes. <laughs> you know, you're not going to take away my peace. Yeah. My peace yeah. in my home. Yeah. And in that moment, I honestly didn't realize what I had said. Yeah. It was after that. It must have been, not must have been, it was between the hour of 11 mm. and 1 mm. when I realized what I had actually said. Mm. Because that's when I actually went to pray. Yeah. Of course, after that, you continued with your work. I continued with my work. Truthfully, I wasn't doing a lot of work because mm. I wasn't at peace. I wasn't mm. settled because I'm not used <clears throat> I'm not used to not being at peace with you. Mm. I had gotten accustomed to it in year one. <laughs> but when we, when we got a lot of things out of the way, mm. I've been accustomed to being at peace and there being peace in our home. Mm. But I had to do the work that I needed to do. I'm not sure the quality of work I was doing. Yeah. When I went to the other room to pray, yeah. I remembered, I was actually reminded, of course I had end a bit, I was reminded that, you know, if you, if you come into the presence of God, eh, yeah. you remember that there's something that's not right. Yeah. Or there's someone who has something that's not, whatever, go and make peace. Mm. But I couldn't come and make peace in that moment mm. because you are praying. <laughs> mm. And I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't want to take you out of that moment. So, yeah. so at one, I say, let me go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I found you had also finished your prayers and I get into bed and I'm like, maybe I should speak to him now. I don't know why I didn't speak to you then. I just got into bed and, and I dozed off. Um, but I woke up with a really, really bad headache. Yeah. I woke up heavy. Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, but who even goes to sleep? Mm with unsettled business. I mean, there's a scripture, <laughs> you know, who, who goes to sleep? Yeah. Who goes to sleep um, with, with that, yeah. you know, with, an un, with unfinished business? Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't want to wake you up. Yeah. Go to take my bath, yeah. get ready. But also the book of my mind, I was like, seriously? Rukshan. Mm. You're preparing to go for a podcast. Mm. When there's unsettled business between your husband and you, like, seriously? And it didn't matter what I tried to do. I tried, I tried to worship while showering. I tried. Mm. Everything just wasn't cutting it. Mm. Until I chewed humble pie and came. Yeah. <laughs> and sought peace. Amen. You know, the power of this is... Um, you see, the accuser of the brethren, his desire is to discredit. If the things of which you speak, you cannot practice, then you lose the authority. True. That is true. Because you become a fake person or a fake people. And I think the opportunity for us sharing also is saying, hey, we get hit also. Yeah. <clears throat> but the thing is not that you're hit. What matters is that you get up. You get up. 
And uh, yeah, that's what makes you my person. <laughs> we are working together because there's a, a world where one of us remained in yesterday and did not let go into today. Yeah, that's true. And then would still be here and equally yoked. But I feel in a way to speak to the legging, someone listening may be like, yo, why this guy? What kind of conservatism is this? (laughs) I, uh, I have a love for decency. Decency. Women that dress indecently, they... Is the word? I don't know. I don't even know how to translate that into English. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I don't even want to look. And uh, there's, uh, there used to be arguments about how women dress and the reactions of men. And uh, most of them used to say, there used to be a narrative that a woman has the right to dress the way she dresses. Uh, her dressing does not give you a right into anything. Yep. But what that shows is a sudden ignorance about stumbling blocks. You can stumble your brother. You can stumble your sister. When when one we become so self-centered, self-centered. Self-centeredness is the root of evil. When you think about things like lust, greed, envy, envy. anger, they all have they revolve around and self-centeredness. Self. Now, when you think about stumbling blocks. When the story comes up is the story of Balaam in the Bible. Uh, The king, there's a king, I think it was called Balak. He saw the children of Israel were conquering people. So he felt, you know what, let me get Balaam to come and cast these people for me. Mm. Now Balaam comes to cast these people. Mm. And Balaam tried and uh, he was told you can't cast whom God has blessed. True. Do you know how eventually they hit the children of Israel? Remind me. They they sent foreign women to their Ah, camp. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And they defiled them. And with that, can you imagine? By by hitting at one's carnality, they were able to achieve what they wouldn't do spiritually. Spiritually. You get? There is a, if you consider that the last was a tool the enemy used to kill the children of Israel who were blessed and couldn't be cast. Mm. You get? And I feel as a Christian, the true embodiment, if, uh, for example, uh, I'm not a Muslim. I can eat pork. But if I went among Muslim people, I cannot eat pork in front of them. Not because I don't have the right to do it. My br- it will stumble my brother. That is the Christian ethos. It is of sacrifice. Now, when you hear the language of rights, the language of rights is often to a people who are so self-centered that they're not willing to sacrifice. Yeah. I woke up this morning thinking about our incident yesterday. And at the heart of it, what I thought was sad was because it was attack on oneness. We couldn't agree. 
we couldn't agree. Now, I understand if I may not agree with someone out there. Someone out there may not agree with me. That's another matter. But my wife, with whom I went into the union of marriage, you see, the scary part is saying, my wife, if your husband thinks it's not right, wouldn't you rather cut off your arm and make it to heaven than to go to hell with both hands? And, and when I think about such a, di- a dynamic, it's not even just about me as head. Even if my wife had an issue with me and I, I should be willing to let go of it. Mm. You get? If someone is in, say someone in my life and my wife gets uncomfortable because of that person in my life, my wife takes precedence over everything else because she's one with me. How can two walk together unless they Thank agree? You. But you see, argument, I remember there's a time we sat on a whiteboard <laughs> and oh, we were discussing <laughs> compromise. And uh, it was about how sometimes people say marriage is about compromise. And I said, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Compromise is not the true spirit of marriage. Compromise is actually an inferior uh, spirit in marriage. Mm. Because compromise says, I I would let go for, uh, it's like, are you letting go begrudgingly? I don't know. Yeah. If I had my way, I wouldn't let go. Exactly. But But I will let go Yes. just for just. Just, thank you. For that peace. Yes. So if it's not compromise, what's the idea? Um... Argument. <laughs> <laughs> no quite a home. No, just... <laughs> sacrifice. Sacrifice. Yes. That's the sacrifice. We understand, right? Yes. That instead of compromise is to sacrifice. Because sacrifice is willing. Is willing. It's joyfully. Yes. It's for me. Yes. Compromise means I have been pushed into a corner. And you reach a point where you say, something. I've compromised too much already. Yeah. I've given up so much. In this marriage, what have you given up? Yeah, that's when we start taking stock Thank of you. I'm doing this. Thank you. I'm the one who's Thank always you. doing this. What is he doing? Why am I the one who's always giving up? Why am I the one who had to quit my job? Yes. Why am I the one who has yes. to do all these things? Yes. And what is he doing? But sacrifice says, sacrifice delights. Thank you. Delights in doing these things. It delights in doing, in giving up for another. Because technically, you're not really giving up for another. Yes. For yourself. Uh-huh. You're not really giving up for another. You're giving up for the sake of oneness. Yes. yes. Your treasure. So you're, you're actually giving up for yourself. Thank because you. if, if your spouse, yes. if your husband or your wife, yes. I don't use the word happy. Happy is a very strange word. If your husband or your wife is in a good place because you've made a sacrifice, if there is peace. Wholeness. Yes. Such as a wholeness. That you basically pick off each other. Yes. yes. When you are unsettled. Yes. Even if I am the cause of the yes. unsettling, Thank you. I can't be settled. Thank you. It doesn't Thank matter you. how much I. Thank you. I, <laughs> I was going to use a certain word. It doesn't matter how much I convince myself. Yes. yes. I am not going to be settled. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. So sacrifice. Yes. And. Uh, it brings me on the topic of sacrifice. And uh, one of the things that was revelational to me, uh, for many years I've walked a journey of faith. And with every year, the new dimensions revealed to faith. Mm. But at the time, I was awakened to the idea of sacrif- sacrifice. Sacrificial faith. Sacrifice is a part of faith. And there's a song I found. It's my song. Uh, the sounds the are not song. fresh. <laughs> y- you, you, won't, you won't even, you won't even, hear. it's not so fancy. When faith demands a sacrifice, I'll mm-hmm. worship even then. 
surrendering the dearest things in life. And if devotion costs me all, he'll find me faithful to his call. When faith demands a sacrifice, the call to go to Mount Moriah came to Abraham and the offering place before the Lord was known to lamb. He took his only son and as the knife was raised, a sacrifice became the price of faith. When faith demands a sacrifice, I'll worship even then. Can you imagine? But sometimes faith demands a sacrifice. You see, if one has things that they hold dear, then they'll struggle with faith. You see, faith works in tandem with obedience. Yeah. It's a place where you trust God so much. There's nothing you can't let go of. And I feel the more we reflect on marriage, it seems an institution that is... Uh, um, amidst the carnality in the world, it seems it's the place that brings out the good nature in man. It seems it's this thing God maintained that if you find its essence, mm. you'll find who you're created to be. You see, I found a parlor in a, in a marriage and also in a walk with God. Mm. And Paul in one of his books talks about, I'm speaking about Christ and the church, but he's talking about marriage. The, the analogy of marriage fits well with Christ and the church. You cannot walk with God when you have I. That's true. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. I was thinking about those words yesterday, night, last night. The word withhold. Withhold. Mm. Two people can be married and they have things they've withheld, withheld. from their Thank union. You. you find a woman has a couple of land, the husband doesn't know. <laughs> You find they the husband a plot has his got plot of land, the wife doesn't know. Of. They've withheld. Now, there's something I've seen about little things. Little things. You see, sin does not require many things. When you submit to sin in one area, you open yourself up. Sin has taken root. I was thinking about cohabitation this morning. <laughs> yeah. And I was pained because many ladies find themselves in such a position. The problem with it, you've, in an arrangement, 
that has not been submitted to God. There is no confession. There is no vow. There are no witnesses. Very likely, the devil puts you in a setup of cohabiting. But if he can get you bound in that, he is going to use that for many other things. This is what they call a back door. Mm. A story is called is told of a Trojan. There's a, a back door, and there's what they call a Trojan horse. I don't know if you've heard of it. Trojan horse, yes. So there's a battle. I think it was between the Greeks and some guys. I don't remember the story well. So these guys had fenced themselves off, and they couldn't be attacked. So the generals on this other team came up with a strategy and they said, let's appear like we've disappeared. So they built a horse out of wood and they put their best men inside it. Now, when these guys came out of their gates, they wait, wait, this guy's ran. And they saw a wooden horse. They're like, oh, but they left a horse. So they took the horse and carried it to their gates. Well, that's where night, the phrase comes from, the yes, Trojan horse. Mm. The Trojan horse. Mm. And at night, they broke free. Then opened the gates and their people entered. And they killed and they took over the entire city. So there are things like a Trojan horses into our lives. There are things you've opened up into your life. And you've locked the door with the enemy inside. You've locked the gates with the enemy inside. Now, you're trying to find deliverance in other areas, but you're walking with the enemy inside. <clears throat> now, and this is where sacrificial faith comes in. Cohabiting for a woman who's believing God for marriage is not a statement of faith. Faith is walking out of things that are not proper and saying, nah, it has to be right by God. That is faith. Willing to lose. You see, if you're not willing to lose, you can't find freedom. freedom. You can't be free. Freedom eludes men. Because it's hidden behind death. death. A man right? afraid to die yes. cannot be free. A woman who's afraid of being unmarried can easily get herself into a, a, a bondage that was not necessary. All because of fear and not being and being afraid to lose. But if devotion costs me all. He'll find me faithful to his call. You see, cohabiting is a very scary place that I pray my daughter never ends up in such a predicament. Because it's akin to one who gets a job in a company without an employment letter, without a contract. So the benefits that come with employment in the law of the land, they don't work with you. You have no social security. You don't have health insurance. Because you entered an arrangement in an improper order. Yes, you have a job in courts. But you didn't have the order official. And there's a power. The many men that can allow to be with you, to live with you. There's no sacrifice in a man. There's no, it doesn't take much of a man to live with a woman. It takes a lot of a man to commit to a to woman. Man. I remember the day I had to 
internalize our marriage. When the revelation came that you are my wife, I remember for days walking and searching. I'm thinking, this lady has a 10-year-old daughter. How do I become a father (laughs) of a 10-year-old? How do you start at that level? Yeah. This lady, older than me by over a decade. (laughs) You make it sound so long. It's just 11 years. (laughs) How do I? Yeah. How do I start? Where do you start from? How? I remember thinking to myself, because (laughs) when we got married, we were abstaining. Yeah. I remember thinking, what if the marital bed uh, yeah, is going to be depressing? Things just don't work out. <laughs> um, and I had to make peace and say, I will. That's the commitment of a man. There are places that are distinct in a man's life. I remember when I was still in my father's house, I had a friend of mine who's who mentored me. And he said, he kept telling me, when you're leaving home. But you know, when you're home, you can't understand what's the fuss about leaving home. I have this free food, this free accommodation. Chores being done by other people. But I remember leaving home. I remember so vivid my moment. I, I made some kamani, fixed it for rent. Then I pr- believed God. I said, I can't leave home without a car. I'm a bit bored. You bought a stallet. <laughs> That's the time you bought a stallet. No, I no, bought a stallet. No, the stallet was at 19. Yes. You bought a Subaru. Then. And I believed God and I got a car, a Subaru. And I never forget the day I left home. Uh, I left home in the evening. I came back. I'd already sorted the house. So I come back in the evening to pick my little things. <laughs> And the wine need. <laughs> I remember there was a bucket at home. I took the bucket. Uh, there was a percolator. And, and I was going out. So I go to my father to give me his blessing as I leave home. And I was like, hey, what's actually interesting? There's a time I tried to leave home. And my dad and mom tried to talk to me against it. Mm. But this time around when I was leaving, my dad was actually giving me his blessing. blessing to leave. Hey, hey, Kali, again, again, I'm calling Nusu. <laughs> I remember his words, right? And I'm getting out to the house, and mom is by the dining. And mom is saying, When so on, do you have a plate? I was like, I don't. So mom gets me a single plate and a spoon and a fork. And a fork. Mm-hmm. And I think she gave me a teaspoon as well, <laughs> right? And I remember mom pushing me to the car. And I remember I put the plate in the back seat of my car because it would be stable. And I went, I put the bucket in the back. And I remember driving out of my dad's compound in the darkness of the compound with the lights of my car. This car I was driving the Subaru. It was the first car I had with a dashboard that could light. Mm. Now, growing up as a child, I had... I always saw the cars that had dashboards that could light. And I never had the car with a dashboard that could light. So it was quite a joy leaving home in that state. But I was thinking about commitment. That was one of the biggest stages of my life. I left home. I had no cooker in my house. I had no fridge. I didn't have curtains even in my bedroom, if I remember. My wife's girlfriend actually gave me her old curtains for my house. She actually gave me... Oh, your brothers. Gave me... Gave me the first duvet I used. Right. But that was the decision. And... 
in that decision, I've never gone back home to stay. That is the power of commitment. It's different for a man being with you than mm-hmm. when a man commits to you. <sighs> you see, a lot of people are trying to find the, the commitment. It's not easy. When Joshua says, I and my house, we serve shall the serve, we'll serve the, the Lord. Lord. It doesn't surprise you that the man who said that, when other people are afraid of the giants in the promised land, he was one who felt we can conquer. Commitment. Commitment. Commitment is about sacrifice. It is a risk. Mm. Marriage is risky. <laughs> I think it's it's one of those it's one of those risks that you you don't quite you cannot quite develop a foolproof risk mitigation plan. Eh? You don't really know what's going to hit you when you get there because it's dif- they're different experiences. Faith. Yeah, faith is actually the the only yes. the only every every commitment that's great requires faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You get? If you could see it, then it's not of faith. Marriage is scary. I remember you find stories of uh, a couple. They've just gotten married, and one of the spouse. And that's one of the spouse, spouses. One of the spouses gets into a health situation. And it turns what you thought was a place for us to enjoy. You now have someone that you need to really whatever you liked of them, they cannot provide. Mm. If it is a sex you went for, it's not there. And you have to walk with this person. So if anyone goes into marriage because of that glitter, they haven't understood commitment. Because you don't know what you're going to pick out of the box. All you can do is to determine that you see it to the end. Regardless, especially if you've decided. For as long as I shall live, I will testify <laughs> to love. I'll be the witness. In the, the silence, silence when the words are known enough. enough. Every breath that I take, I'll I give thanks to God above. For as, as long, long as I shall, shall live. live. I will testify to love. You see, the story of Job mm-hmm. is a story of marriage. <sighs> of a man to God. The wife, the wife told him, cast God and die. It's not different from a woman's, a, a lady's friend telling her to curse her man. Or to walk out of the marriage. Exactly. That's yeah, the same thing. That's the same thing. Because you can't, yes. Walk out of the marriage, is, yes. that stress is not worth The reason it, it wasn't then because then they cast God. So you're walking out may be the cast equivalent. That is the weight of this commitment. You don't have a marriage if you don't have commitment. And faith. You can't have a commitment without Without faith. Do you know how many people are stuck in their father's homes or their mother's homes? Because they don't have the faith. To venture forth. 
I think while we're talking about commitment, because commitment, <coughs> while it's, um, it swings both ways, commitment swings both ways when you're in the marriage. Prior to getting into the marriage, commitment sits heavily on the man because he's the one who makes the decision, the choice. He's the one who finds the wife. Yeah. But um, I think the part that we sometimes miss or maybe one of the reasons why sometimes men struggle yeah. is because the reason why sometimes men struggle is because they are afraid. Mm. They are afraid mm. of being rejected. Mm. I think I came to the appreciation that being a man isn't easy. You can actually take it for granted. By the way, for a man to propose to a woman, it takes I, uh, a lot. I, I know uh, you're not going to agree with me. There's something but... there I want us to correct. Okay. And if I correct wrongly, correct me. If you correct wrongly, I shall correct you. Yes. Okay. Um, you say that's not that to be a man, that men fear rejection. I know you're going to go to Papa's. I've come to realize <laughs> a friend of mine, Richard Kaiser, did a song called From Male to Man. And one thing I learned about being a man, when a man, when a, even your parents can see when the child has become a man. Mm. Because a man is being able to commit to something and doesn't care what comes. You see, rejection for a man. You see, if you feel a rejection, there's something that hasn't tallied yet. You're not yet ready to lead. I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> I totally agree. So maybe these men are not ready to lead, but they have reached the age and they ah, desire ah, ah, ah. to lead. So marriage is not age. And this is where most so, women get into trouble <laughs> also. Because they feel the time has come. Right? So they end up in unions whose foundations are not proper, driven by time. Hmm. You get? Because think about this. You're going to submit to this man your entire life. Why do you submit to a man that you wouldn't want to be submitted to, but because time has put you in such a place. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you that one. On that one, dear husband. <laughs> 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 and I think that's where um, the reason why some women find themselves in that space, even when they're women who know God, because that's what we're talking about, is because they probably, there are a couple of things. And, and I'm saying this from experience, from my own personal experience. One, they haven't understood. They do not know who they are. Because if I had known who I was and I understood and I appreciated who I was in Christ, not who I was based on what the world sees and knows, but who I was in Christ, then there would never have been pressure yeah. to get married. Because I would understand that I am not defined by my marriage. Yeah. Yeah. It, I would understand that it is more important for me to be joined to the right man. Yeah. And the right man means the one to whom I will be a suitable helper. The one to whom, the one to whom my everything about my life is aligned to his purpose and where he's going. Yeah. Because I have a job to do. If I had known who I was in Christ, that pressure wouldn't have been there. If I had known who I was in Christ, I would have known that, and if I had also known and understood who Christ was and everything about God and the plans that he has for my life, then time would never have mattered. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's able to do and accomplish in three years yeah. that which people take a decade yeah. or in a year yeah. to do. And I remember as we, as I started, as we started on this journey, there's something that, um, there's a lady I was walking with <clears throat> and she would keep telling me, mm. Mm. as in the problem you have is you have no idea mm. who you are and who you are in Christ. Mm. 
And this is someone who had just met me. Yeah. But she definitely saw something that I had never seen yeah. for all the years that I had walked with God. Yeah. I can't even say I was walking with God. Eh? Yeah. For all the years that I said I was born again because my life was in a totally <laughs> different mess. Yeah. And because we do not know, then we easily... It's diffic- When you do not know, it's difficult for you to walk the way of truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't. So everything about the world view and the world perspective is what leads you. That is why you look at your clock and say the clock is biological clock is ticking. Yeah, yeah. You understand. You get to a certain point and you feel there's no more hope for me. But who says there's no hope? Yeah. Whew, you're not God. The one who knew you while you were yet and formed in your, father, in your mother's womb yeah. and fashioned all the days of your life. Yeah. It is not lost on him that yeah. you're 35 or 30, I even meet 28 year olds, 26. And they're beginning to get into a panic of I'm not married. Yeah. Yeah? So I think that's that's where some of the challenges come. And then, and that's where cohabitation sort of becomes a preferred thing. We sell ourselves short. We really, really, really sell ourselves short. And you talked about Sin and the Trojan horse. Trojan. The Tro- <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying Trojan. The Tro- speaking French. The Trojan horse <laughs> and the Trojan horse. It is so difficult as a Christian woman trying to walk when you're in that kind of relationship. Mm. Mm. It is so difficult. Mm. I know because I've been there. Yeah. It is so difficult. In one moment, you're led to fast and pray. And then you're going to the place of prayer, but you're like, but now what am I doing here? You understand? What am I actually doing here? I can't. I can't even pray. And then you try to disentangle yourself and you can't disentangle yourself. It is so difficult. And and for me, what I would say to someone who is not in that space don't even toy with it. Yeah. Don't even, because it's what they call a proper, proper hold on you. Yeah. It is so, yeah. so, so difficult. I, it's regardless of what the person says, regardless of whether the, because you know, the, the, certain, the, the enemy has a way of making us feel like it's kind of okay yeah. because you're like, oh, we're both born again. Yeah. We both go to church. Yeah. We pray. But that's not the truth. Yeah. And even then, it leaves you so scarred. And there's stuff you need to deal with when you eventually get, when by God's grace, you eventually snap out, get out of it. There's so much you need to deal with. There's so much you need to disentangle yourself with. And it's it's not worth it. It actually isn't worth it. There's a lot of strife. If there's no strife in the beginning, it's only a matter of time before there'll be strife because the inner man knows that what you're doing is wrong yeah. and you cannot be comfortable. You have to suppress him. You really, to, really to have live. to suppress him. But this is the beauty about God. You cannot suppress him for so long. You will have those moments yeah. when you shall be convicted of yeah. sin. But you know what's and, interesting? Hmm. As you suppress him to make peace with what you're doing, you actually also block him from what he should ought to be showing you. What, who ought to be showing you? you see, the inner man, the spirit yes, 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 the spirit of God. As he's trying <coughs> to convict you of sin and you cover him up so that you don't hear him, even the other things concerning your life of benefit, yes. you won't hear because you covered him. Because of this selfishness, you covered him, but you saw covered along all the good you need from him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's a struggle and it's not worth it. And... Uh, you said something profound, the power of identity. Who am who am I? Who am I? And I think that's a place of victory. That when one says, Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. I think Spirit and the Bible talks about a royal priesthood, a city on a hill. A chosen generation. generation. If you start to understand 
what an what what manner of being you are when you have the spirit of god in you the devil has to hit at your esteem and he hits at your esteem by sense a sense of identity that is so true if if he can get you to see yourself as a, a poor being that's why i've learned i don't speak negative of myself we've had battles in our household <laughs> over negative speech yeah me not even making room and compromising about negative speech i can't even say i am poor i can't even say i have no money in those a few moments i see your eyes glaring <laughs> you can't yeah. say oh, we don't have money half that the communication of your faith, faith my proof of faith by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you Jesus in Christ Jesus if they say let the blind see can see the people who go to pray every day and they're praying to god uh for a husband but imagine if they went to god and thanked god for their husband because of behold beheld the substance of things hoped for the beheld the evidence of things not seen you see the prayer of faith and there's such a place where when some can learn about faith that faith without works is dead. dead and what are the works of faith the works of faith is where you're so persuaded of having received that you are hoping that you actually do what you ought to do if you believe in god for a car you actually uh go and start to process your permit mm. convicted that you have the car you build you have the evidence of that that's not seen you hear someone who's believing god of going abroad but they don't have a passport I'm like no i don't see your faith because if your faith is proper you start to do things aligned if a woman believes has the faith that god is bringing the man she's meant to help her actions ought to be aligned aligned yeah you cannot be hanging doing the same things walking a single life perhaps as soon you start to go back home early maybe you cut out the party maybe you you understand me because you've believed you actually can start living like a married woman you actually not allow random men to waste your time, time. Because, because you're a married the, woman he just hasn't appeared yet hey, don't, he's don't. coming he's <laughs> so that's, that's it's nice. the radicalness of faith it's the radicalness of faith you get i remember and this is uh the last story i went to I went to Mango Senior School and I stayed in a hostel called Usha Hostel and our warden was Mr. Katuku and he raised us I joined senior one senior four and he was like a father to us years back I go I passed by he had put a, a storied structure and he was telling me a story and he says my son god built that building and he gave me a story that when he started the money he had was to lay the foundation i left challenged because i had the witness of faith mm. so 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 no more <clears throat> next to me there's someone who's believing god for money for a house to build their house but they don't understand you just need the faith to go and dig the foundation if you've believed some people are still praying instead of walking in the face of answered prayers in the morning when i woke up and i didn't know if i had the strength to do this podcast given how everything was a part of me said you just go pop the spirit of god will descend upon you <laughs> and you be turned into another man and everything will, will will rest and your minister yeah now 
the people who observe lying vanities for sex they are on mercy. The woman who feels she's single, who told you you're single? Who told you you're single? <laughs> And it's interesting how we carry these labels around. My single mother. We wear them with pride. My single woman. You see, the communication of your faith. You see, as a man thinketh, so he is. So he is. You see, the moment you open up to the devil about negativity in your life, he can amplify it for you. But in like manner, as you go about positive, God will amplify it for you. Mm. You get You start with your little faith. Like that little light. This little light of mine, I'm all let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You know, there's a, there's a time. Ning Anjo get in you. <laughs> there's, a, there's a time I remember I used to go to church back in 2015 and the time where you don't have enough fuel in the car you look you you'd measure how many kilometers mm. you can get so you you driving you give up with a light because sorry is on so, is. <laughs> so, so you have to measure the kilometer like mm, it's been five kilometers I still have I still have a few when kilometers someone tells to you to give them a ride you're like mm, where to that enters about five extra. I don't think I can afford. But uh, I remember the moments I'd go to church and I have 20K in my pocket. And because I was starting to feel I'm broke with 20K in the pocket, I gave my money, I give it away. But this is what's strange. Hmm. I've seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I'm persuaded yep. those little actions of faith, God amplified. It does. He did. I got to get up. <laughs> Not really. Um, okay, maybe just one thing. Um, do I get to hold your hand? Yes, you do. Just one thing maybe that I'd like to add, and it goes back to to finding yourself, not finding yourself because you get there willingly, uh, being in a space where maybe, because um, it talks a lot about cohabitation, yeah. being in this space and there's someone who is in there and they're condemning themselves. Mm. and they're a Christian obviously because we're talking to Christians mostly um, the Bible says there's therefore now no condemnation for yeah. one who's in Christ yeah. and God looks at the heart yeah. I am honestly persuaded that it's only when I got to that place where deep down in my heart yeah. deep deep down in my heart yeah. I wanted to get out of this thing yeah. and yeah. I couldn't get out of it. Yeah. And it was only in that moment yeah. that the Lord stepped in yeah. and helped me break it. Yeah. Right? But that can only happen if you're not in a place of condemning yourself. Mm. Of course, you have to be open and honest with God because he sees it anyway. And God, God cannot be deceived. Yeah. He sees when you're broken, when your mm. sin is breaking you mm. and you do not have a the broken strength. Broken and contrite heart. Yes. That is what he looks for, yeah. and he will make a way. Yeah. He will definitely make a way yeah. to take you out of that yeah. situation. Whatever situation yeah. it is, yeah. Yeah. he will make a way to take yeah. you out of that situation. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, that's the encouragement, because there are people who actually stay in situations because they can't see a way out. They're yeah. trying to get out of it, yeah. but because they're trying to get out of it in their own strength, and they get stuck. Yeah. Think about the prodigal son. Yeah. He left. Yeah his father's house. Yeah. He was never sent away. His father had a lot. He asked for his inheritance, left it, went, squandered it, yeah. started living like a pauper. It got to a place where he recognized that the workers in his father's house yeah. were living far better than he was. Yeah. But he, had the, he found the humility to go back by yeah. God's grace. 
he had it I, I believe it took for him to be broken yeah. to go back yeah. and of course not of course I'm guessing as he was going back he was probably if he was modern day prodigal son mm. he was probably envisaging all the possible ways his father could have responded yeah but his father put out a fist for him yeah. to the extent that even the brother who stayed must, must have felt like yeah. Yeah. now me who I, me who stayed really this guy went away yeah. and now he's, yeah. he's he's receiving a better whatever yeah and that's the way god is with us yeah. he's waiting he's waiting for us to just surrender and say yeah. lord here i am help me there's a song that that paints a very very a vivid picture of that and let me see if i remember how it goes it starts by the service it's a very very old song yeah. the service is nearing the end and the choir is singing just as i am and now as the old song is played People at the altar are kneeling down to pray. Some are fighting battles. Some are fun. <laughs> Forgiveness for their sins. And some are fighting battles. They are struggling to win. The time has come to give in to the Lord. That's what this altar is for. That's what this altar is for. And you don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness and there's a love that's true. And Jesus is waiting, he is waiting here for you. Come quickly now, before they close the door. That's what this altar is for. We never really have to fight those battles on our own. We don't have to carry the weight when there is one that carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders. It doesn't matter what we have done. It doesn't matter where we are. Sometimes we feel like God left or God moved, but it's because we moved. The encouragement we have is that exactly where we left him is where he still is. And he's just waiting. Like the prodigal, the father to the prodigal son is just waiting and he rejoices when we return. Amen. All we have to do is surrender and just say, Lord, here I am. Amen. He's done it before. He will do it again. Amen. He will do it again. While the enemy meant for evil. God has turned it around. He's turned, turned it around. around. What the enemy he meant for e evil, God has turned, turned it around, around for my good. What the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it around. He will turn it around. What the enemy meant. I feel a leading to pray for um, people may be caught up in a cohabiting situation and uh, perhaps are convicted yeah. of it not being the place I want to be in. But perhaps they are all things and fears that uh, sort of Put them in that trap. Yeah. You pray. Father, we thank you. 
We thank you because the entrance of your word brings light. We thank you because, Father, <coughs> you're faithful. You're faithful. You're faithful, O oh Lord. You're faithful. In this moment, O oh Lord, we stand in the gap for everyone, O oh Lord, men and women alike that are caught in that situation, that find themselves in a situation and a place of cohabitation, O oh Lord. For we know it is not pleasing to you, O oh Lord. We know that it is sin. But they do not see a way out. There's some that are convicted and they're thinking, but I have children. How can I walk away? There's some that are convicted and they're thinking, but how will I live? Where do I start from? How will I take care of myself? I've invested so much in this relationship. And there are some who feel that on account of the circumstances around their life, this is the best thing that has happened to them. But Father, we know that there is nothing you cannot do. We know that a broken and a contrite spirit you do not despise and you do not turn away, O Lord. So we pray for those that think that there is no way out, O Lord. May you show them a way. May you show them a way, O Lord. You have done it before, and you can do it again. And Father, for those that are in these situations on account of them, on, on account of an identity that they do not understand, Father, we know that you created us in your image, in your likeness, O oh Lord. May you open up their eyes. May you open up the eyes of their hearts. May you open up the eyes of their understanding that, Father, they would see who they are in you, that they would see themselves as you see them. For those that are in this situation because they feel it is the best thing that could have happened to them, and yet now they carry the weight, Father, may you show them that there is better. May you remind them that there is better, that there is greater. May you remind them that the plans that you have for their lives, O oh Lord, are plans to prosper them. They are good. Plans to give them a hope and to give them a future. And that, Father, you know them and you love them and that they are not judged. That if they come before you, O oh Lord, in repentance, Father, you will remove, and their transgressions have already been removed from them. For many such as this and us, O oh Lord, you died. You gave your son. That is why he died at the cross. That there may be no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We pray for faith. Faith to step out and walk, even when they have no idea where they are going to, O oh Lord, or how their lives will turn out. We pray for faith that has already been made available. And Father, we don't just pray for the women, but we pray for the men as well. We pray for the men as well. You are faithful, O oh God. You are faithful, O oh God. You are faithful, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because you have made a way for us to ask through Jesus' name. And whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, and whatever we believe, it is established. So we thank you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we believed and prayed.